morning. Good morning. Welcome to our daily devotions today with Pastor Sutton as I'm getting coffee. Thank you. Uh-oh. 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 Not the plastic I'm worried about. It's the cleaner. <laughs> I make issues. All right. All right. Good morning. Glad you're here with me uh, on this Thursday. Thursday, December 15th. Um, that means 10 days, by the way, guys. This is your official 10-day warning. So we survived Snowmageddon, which turned out to just be a snowstorm. Um, the snow didn't, the, the rain didn't convert to snow till um, in the early hours, which is later than was expected. And uh, five inches. I haven't actually been out there yet. Just looked out the window, but. Bonnie thought maybe five inches. Oh, look at this. This thing is goofing up again. There's all kinds of weird stuff going on here. I don't know if it's my computer. I know my computers have problems. I think I got that solved, though. I think I got the file copied over to the drive during the night last night. I had to work some technical wizardry to get the drive to work again. And uh, after we're done here, I'm going to reinstall or install. Reinstall? I guess since it's the drive I took out of this computer when I got it to put it in the solid state, I'm going to reinstall the drive that I got with it that now has all of this on it except for this video um, and the things that I've done this morning. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to do that. I put that back in, and then I think I think it'll be the weird stuff will go away for a while, and then I can. Get a new, get the new drive from Western Digital, and transfer that data over, and start all over again. So, good morning. Glad you're here with us. Uh, if you're here in Wisconsin, glad. Hopefully, you're okay and have power and everything. I heard Seymour didn't have power this morning. I heard that from Pete Petoniak over on the Green Bay Fox station. Um, but I haven't heard of any other power outages in the area. We're still running well. Our little satellite dishes. Yeah, you know, the, they they were they weren't entirely not that Elon Musk is smart, right? And he's got smart people working for him, intelligent people working for him, and they they built into these little dishes like I have um, for Starlink. They built in a heater so that if it because they're they're flat. I mean, the whole thing's not the dish. You know, I I remember when I worked when I first started working um, satellite and TV way back in the eighties. <laughs> way back in the 80s um uh, and we had 11 and 12 foot satellite dishes and then we went down to 10 foot dishes uh and then six and in fact uh, bonnie and i at one time behind our mobile home had a five foot dish oh that was all the terror in the neighborhood uh, in the mobile home court except it was behind the trailer so we could see it uh, and the manager said but yeah we had a five foot dish and we got it was pointed at just one satellite. It wasn't pivoting, but it was enough to get radio and some stations and stuff like that. Um, I worked in the industry. I should have it, right? <clears throat> and we got down to the, uh, I remember when the when the RCA or DirecTV or, or uh, Starlink, and not Starlink, uh, Echo Star came out, and they were like two-foot dishes, and everybody, oh, look at that work. It's so small. Now, this thing is barely bigger than a sheet of paper, to be honest with you. It's like the size of a, Maybe a, you remember construction paper when you were a kid, like, um, uh, what was that, like 14 by 14 by 11 or something like that? Um, it's, how big, it's not very big, it's flat, um, parabolic on the back, but the surface is flat. And they put heaters in it so that if it gets ice or snow on it, it melts it off. And they, they set it up in the software so it's automatic. You don't have to do anything. Um, and yesterday morning, yesterday morning or last night, the night before last, anyway, I went into the app and I saw that it wasn't heating. So they also have a preheat setting on it. So you can just turn the heater on and it'll be on. And I said to Bonnie, I said, I'm going to do that. I said, because it, it that way uh, it stays ahead of the game here. Now that the, when this goes off and it's all done, then I can turn that off the back to automatic. But I've got this morning, I got 200 meg down and, and, uh, uh, 16, 17 meg up, so I'm, I, we're doing this. What's that? What? What do you mean? Oh, because nobody's online. Yeah, well, yeah, in the evenings it goes down quite a bit, but it, it's still, 
way better than what we were getting on a phone line uh, in this area. So you didn't want to know about that. You, you're here for the daily devotions. So let's see, <clears throat> let's see who is here with us, and, and, and we'll go from there. But schools are canceled in the area again. Um, I assume Merrill is. I didn't look it up. I know Tomahawk is. <clears throat> I assume north of here, Cajun and things like that are, huh? Yeah, they, the school canceled last night, and I don't, I don't blame them. Um, in fact, when Bonnie was out with a dog uh, here, uh, it'd be hour, hour and a half ago, um, the northbound lane on 51 was plowed, but the southbound lane hadn't been plowed yet. So, well, let's go ahead here and greet our visitors, Geraldine and Neil. Good morning to you, Mushnak. Good evening, you know, Mushnak. Do you, I, it's a silly question, I know, but. Tell us, do you get snow over there? I mean, does it does it get below uh, 30 degrees Fahrenheit, zero Celsius, um, in in your area in in Pakistan? I'm I'm, you know, I you just take what you've got in your own region for granted, and you don't think about the rest of the world because we're so uh, egocentric. Jeannie and Bob, good morning to you. Jerry, good morning. Sleet, windy day. Yeah, you guys are. Well, you're not getting quite the stuff we had, but maybe. I mean, the stuff we had is kind of, it's kind of coming up from Florida towards Michigan a little bit, but then it circles back and goes through Wisconsin and Canada. And they're not the same thing, by the way, Wisconsin and Canada. And then it, and then it comes back around through the Dakotas and back towards us. And that's the stuff we're going to get later today is the stuff that's out the other side of Minnesota uh, and things. Kathy, good morning. Ashley, good morning. Verna, good morning. Deb, good morning. Yes, you got snow down there. That's true. <clears throat> seven to eight on top of ice. Really? You got seven to eight down? Well, I guess they said to the south it was going to be more, but I'm kind of surprised. Lost a tree in the backyard. Oh, wow. All right. Glenn, good morning. Kendra, good morning. Renee, good morning. Michael, Bringing plants in, awning down, storm coming. Oh, okay. Well, batting down the proverbial. Well, yeah, it's the stuff that was coming across the Gulf, I think, that's the moisture's feeding what we're getting, and you're getting the the rain and the storm down there. Um, yeah, okay, so actually saying seven in, in Wausau, too. Hey, John, good morning to you. Say hi to Janet for me, too, will you? Um, I saw the, the twins got baptized a couple Sundays ago. Congratulations on that there, Grandpa and Grandma. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> All of a sudden here. Um, let's go ahead and uh, get down to the brass tacks here. Oh, hello to everybody else, too. Those those who are watching now later uh, on YouTube after I've got this uploaded at, after 11. Um, good morning. Hello. Greetings. Salut. Uh, good morning. Uh, welcome. Uh, what have you. Glad you're here with us. And here's uh, my treasury. If you have the Lutheran service book, page 295, daily prayer for individuals and families, the morning order, that's where we are each day. So, and so, 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 and so. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O oh Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our psalm today, Psalm uh, 146, verses 1 through 7. Psalm, no snow in my province, but in the northern Pakistan, near the border of Afghanistan and China. Okay, all right, so north of you. <clears throat> so if you went for a ride and you went up there, which you probably wouldn't want necessarily to do, you could, you could, you could have taken the kids to see what snow is. Um, well, thank you, thank you. Um, Psalm 146, one through seven. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God while I have my being. Put not your trust in princes in a son of man in whom there is no salvation. When his breath departs, he returns to the earth. On that very day, his plans perish. Blessed is he whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord his God, who made heaven and earth, 
the sea, and all that is in them, who keeps faith forever, who executes justice for the oppressed, who gives food to the hungry. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Hey, I remember, boy, is it two years ago now, maybe, when I was headed up on a Sunday morning to Harshaw, when it was kind of like after after a storm like this. Um, I remember, uh, Mushtaq, I sent you a, I don't know if I posted my page or if I sent it to you directly, but a video of, video or pictures of driving through the, the Northwoods. <laughs> uh, yeah, your response was amusing to me at the time. You were very concerned uh, about my driving in it, but that's life in Wisconsin this time of year. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, all my soul. I praise the Lord as long as I live. You know, the the praises that we give to God, though, are not from our, our what do I want to say? Not just anybody can praise God faithfully. What do you mean by that? Well, if if you aren't in God, right? if you aren't in Christ, if you don't, if you don't trust in God, if your faith isn't in God, if your life isn't lived in Christ, then your praises to God don't mean a whole lot. Um, it, 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 you know, we we live in a in a world where we've become egalitarian and and everything's equal, and and it doesn't matter who you are. Uh, you should be the same as everybody else, uh, if you're following me. Um, everything is about equality. It doesn't matter who you are or who somebody else is or anything like that. Um, they should have the same things that anyone else has. And, um, it, it, and, and when I say this, um, there is there isn't... Uh, well, God, God is not, how do I put this? God is not accepting of all things. God is not, God is not a, 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 a blessing to all things. And God is not accepting of all things or condoning of all things, right? Um, there is good and evil. There is and, and, and that distinction is made by those in Christ and those outside of Christ. I know in our age that that sounds just so terrible, but it's, but it's true. Either you're in Christ or you're not in Christ. And and those who are in Christ, when they sing praises to the Lord, when they call upon Him, it's it's not so that it, it, it's it's a it's words of thanksgiving. They recognize everything that God has done for them, although they may not recognize it all the time. When they don't, they repent of not recognizing it, and then they give thanks to the Lord. And, and the praise comes from a grateful heart. Wow, is that right? Yeah. Give thanks with a grateful heart. I think there's a hymn in our hymnal that does that. Um, but those who are outside of Christ, you know, they might say, thank God, but what do they mean by it? Well, they do not know him. Nor, uh, nor, <clears throat> nor do they want to. But I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to God while I have my being. My trust is not in the princes or the son of man. There's no salvation there. When his breath, when man's breath departs, he returns to the earth. And on that very day, his plans perish, right? I, I, when, when you die, you're done. You, everything that you had laid out before you, nothing. But God's plan continues. <clears throat> you know, <clears throat> I challenge the when I have the Bible history class, we're going through <clears throat> I almost need a cough button. <clears throat> we're going through the Old Testament. We're talking about the days of Adam, the generations of Adam um, leading up to Noah. And there's five or six generations in there. And then I asked the children, I said, you know, do you know your 
well, do you know your, your parents? Well, yeah, you do. Do you know your grandparents? Well, most do. Do you know your great parent, grandparents? Well, some do. But great, 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 three, a fourth generation back. Not really. And by five, <clears throat> I might know the names of people five generations ago, which, you know, I mean, that's, we're into the over 100 years at that point, almost 200. <clears throat> um, but do you know five generations back what the hopes and dreams and desires were of those people, what their plans were? No, they perish. But God's plans from five generations ago continue exactly as they always have. So blessed is he whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord his God, because that hope is eternal, continual, ongoing. <coughs> he is the one who made the all that is, earth and sea, all in him, and keeps faith forever, executing justice for the oppressed and gives food to the hungry. It's good stuff right there. We don't even need to go to the Old Testament reading. That's good enough stuff right there. No, we will. We'll go to we'll go to Isaiah here, chapter thirty, verses twenty seven to thirty one nine. <clears throat> okay, so um again, we've got kind of got in Isaiah, we've kind of got this cycle, kind of got we've got the cycle of blessing and curse. Um uh salvation and condemnation. And, and we're in the midst of that. And we left off yesterday in verse 26 with the Lord being gracious, uh, the Lord being gracious to uh, to those who are in him. So, uh, but this, and we're, so we're going to pick up with that graciousness of, of the Lord, but then we're going to turn again to, to woe um, in, ver, in chapter 31. So uh, we'll pick up here at 3027. Behold, the name of the Lord comes from afar burning with his anger and in thick rising smoke. His lips are of are full of fury, and his tongue is like a devouring fire. His breath is like an overflowing stream that reaches up to the neck to sift the nations with the sieve of destruction. Do you say sieve or do you say sieve? I say sieve. Um, and to place on the jaws of the peoples a bridle that leads astray. Oh, you shall have a song as in the night when the holy feast is kept and gladness of heart as one who sets out at the sound of the flute to go to the mountain of the Lord, to the rock of Israel. And the Lord will cause his majestic voice to be heard and the descending blow of his arm to be seen in furious anger and a flame of devouring fire with cloud bursts and storm and hailstones. The Assyrians will be terror-stricken at the voice of the Lord when he strikes with his rod. And every stroke of the appointed staff that the Lord lays on them will be to the sound of tambourines and lyres, battling with brandishing arm, with brandished arm. He will fight with them. For a burning place has been long prepared. Indeed, for the king it is made ready, its pyre made deep and wide, with fire and wood in abundance, the breath of the Lord like a stream of sulfur kindles it. Woe to those who go down to Egypt for help and rely on horses, who trust in chariots because they are many, and in horsemen because they are very strong. But do not look to the Holy One of Israel or consult the Lord. And yet he is wise and brings disaster. He does not call back his words, but will arise against the house of the evildoers and against the helpers of those who work iniquity. The Egyptians are man and not God, and their horses are flesh, not spirit. When the Lord stretches out his hand, the helper will stumble, and he who is helped will fall, and they will perish together. For thus the Lord said to me, as a lion or a young lion growls over his prey, and when a band of shepherds is called out against him, he is not terrified by their shouting or daunted at their noise. So the Lord of hosts will come down to fight on Mount Zion and on its hill. Like birds hovering, so the Lord of hosts will protect Jerusalem. He will protect and deliver it. He will spare and rescue it. Turn to him from whom people have re deeply Turn to him from whom people have deeply revolted, O children of Israel. For in that day, 
Everyone shall cast away his idols of silver and his idols of gold, which your hands have sinfully made for you. And the Assyrian shall fall by the sword, fall by a sword not of man, and a, a sword not of man shall devour him. And he shall flee from the sword, and his young men shall be put to forced labor. His rock shall pass away in terror, and his officers shall desert the standard in panic. Decla declares the Lord, whose fire is in Zion, and whose furnace is in Jerusalem. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Uh, hey, Connie and Robin, good to see you guys here. Seven to eight, yeah, and I, ha I haven't talked to uh, Paul or Rich or, or Bob yet to talk about whether we're going to have church tonight or not. I don't think we are, but I'll come back to that. Um, Behold, the name of the Lord comes from afar. So uh, <clears throat> this is, again, a mix of poetry and prose. If you had your Bible open and looked at it, you'd see that um, 27 through 28 are, are in that staggered uh, formatting, which is poetry or, or singing. And, the, and then 20, 29 through the end of, of chapter 30 is prose again, right? Normal paragraph format. And then 31 picks up again with mostly with um, that poetic format, but verse six is in, six and seven is in prose again. <clears throat> so we got a little bit of imagery, a little bit of telling, a little bit of imagery, a little bit of telling. Um, but the, the, the point here, I mean, if we take, this is almost repetition of what we heard yesterday. In fact, as I was reading and I was thinking, didn't I just read this? Am I reading the same thing again? But no, it's, it's different. I'm, I'm on December 15th, not December 14th. Um, but so the Lord comes from afar, uh, his anger and thick rising smoke, his lips filled with fury, his tongue like a devouring fire. Um, and, and he sifts the nations and places and to place on the jaws of the peoples a bridle that leads astray. Now that, that peoples is not his peoples. That peoples is the, is the, um, um, the ethne, the ethnic, the, the not peoples of God, whom he leads, uh, leads astray. He leads away, uh, away from the people of Israel, right? So their plans are, are not successful. Um, but you, and now he's talking to Israel. He's talking to those who remain faithful to him. You shall have a song in the night of the holy feast and gladness of heart uh, as you go to the mountain of the rock of the Lord. And the Lord, uh, with his voice, will be heard. You'll see the descending blow of his arm, right? In furious anger and flame to devour fire and cloudburst and storm and hailstones, right? Um, some have taken that passage to talk about end times and it's missiles falling or something like that, but it doesn't matter what it is. The destruction of the Lord does come upon Assyria, and that's what he's talking about. The Assyrians will be terror-stricken, right? They were the ones that God used to uh, conquer, vanquish the, the northern kingdom, the kingdom of Israel. Um, the Assyrians take it over. It had become Samaria anyway. Um, but the Assyrians take it, well, no, at that point, it wasn't Samaria yet. It will be Samaria. Um, but the Assyrians um, are struck by this. The Lord strikes with his rod. Um, every stroke uh, the Lord lays upon them to the sound of tambourines and lyres, right? So uh, to the people of God, it's a party, I guess. Um, and so uh, for that, for a burning place, a burning place has been prepared, indeed, for the king it has made ready its pyre, made deep and wide, and with fire and wood in abundance, and the breath of the Lord, like a stream of sulfur, kindles it. And this, that, that can't be anything but hell. That, that, that's that's, that's got to be the fires that burn without end that Christ speaks of. Uh, kindled by the sulfury breath of the Lord. Uh, with fire, and, and you know, I... I've mentioned before that I'm not a fan of um, cremation uh, for the handling of our bodies uh, in death. Um, because, and, and here it is. The word pyre is what the pagans used to use to burn bodies up, right? They'd build a pyre, and then they'd lay the body on the pyre and burn up. Pyre, 
Uh, and these are these are people that are coming under God's judgment, right? A burning place has been prepared indeed for a king. It's made ready. It's pyre made deep and wide with fire and wood in abundance. So, so and, and there that chapter ends, but then God begins to pronounce in chapter 31, woe to those who go to Egypt for help. Now, we, we heard that yesterday. We heard that Egypt is not a place of help for the people of God, but that, like I said, that last king of Israel will reach out and make an alliance with the kings of, with Pharaoh, king of Egypt, um, thinking that that will be their salvation, right? But um, what do those who go to Egypt rely on horses and trust in chariots because they're many and horsemen because they're strong, but do not look to the Holy One of Israel or consult the Lord. They are flesh. They are, they are flesh. The Egyptians are man, not God. Salvation is not in man. It's in God. Their horses are flesh, not spirit. Uh, the Lord stretches out his hand and, the, and the, the helper, the Egyptian, will stumble. And he who has helped will fall, right? And they will perish together. It doesn't matter. The Egyptian and the, and the, and the Israelite alike, when they've turned from God, uh, seeking man to be their savior, they both fall. Um, so he calls in, in verse six, turn to him from whom people have deeply, turn to him from whom people have deeply revolted, O children of Israel. Return, turn back, come back. For in that day, the day of turning, the day when they come back to the Lord, everyone shall cast away the idol of his silver and gold. Uh, that the hands of silver sinfully made, and the Assyrians shall fall by the sword, right? If you would just stop doing what you want to do and start following God again, be in the Lord, right? Not be outside of him, but be in him. Um, then all is good, and, and the Lord will protect you. It's it's so. It has become so difficult in our age to speak truths like this, that you're either in Christ or outside of Christ, and it, and it, the, 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 there isn't a equality of thought and mind and deed. Um, ah, Christ, I think it is himself says what what. Uh, nor does it Paul. But what 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 does light have to do with darkness? You, you can't have it both ways. Um, you're either in Christ or you're outside of Him. Um, and and God's gracious desire, His gracious will, He does not desire to see the death of the sinner. And so God's gracious call is the gospel in Christ calling you out of darkness into his marvelous light, right? To be in Christ, to have faith in God, to trust in him, even in the midst of everything that goes on around us and to be obedient to him. And so as a, as a, as a pastor who is fairly confident he's in Christ, I mean, I, I know I am. I, there's no fairly confident about it. Um, and who has the true and inerrant word of God and preaches and teaches it and, and believes it, um, believes it because it is God's word and it's true, to see some of these things that we we are allowing in our world. I mean, if a person wants to go on sinning, that's on them, but it's our task to continually share the promise and the gospel with them. Um, but when it comes to, when it comes to, Living in a world where murder is codified, put into codes, um, it's just difficult to not say something. Um, and, and, I, and I think, friends, I, I would encourage you to speak um, with legislators, with local government. Um, and I'm, I'm not getting political here. I'm saying there are things... There are truths that are self-evident that out of love for our neighbor, we need to say thus far and no further. I, I, this isn't a political statement. 
this is a statement of, of faith, right? Murder is wrong. Um, living, I mean, just take one of Paul's lists, okay? Just go to one of Paul's letters, the Corinthians is good, um, and, and take one of his lists of all the things that, that Paul lists as things that are condemned by God. Go down the list and then see how many of those things are going on in our world today. And then begin to think about what God wants. And you already know, because you're here, and you're hearing it, and you're in the Word. And then live your life in that, and encourage others to do the same at every level of life. From the, from the poorest man and, or woman in the street, uh, to the wealthiest man uh, in the nation. Um, the truth is the truth. And that truth is God's truth. Trust not in the in the princes or men or the strength of horses, but trust in him who saves, him who has sent his only begotten son to save you from sin, death, and hell, to save all mankind if they would but yet turn, cast away their idols, and live in him. Amen. Let's look to our prayer of the day. Lord Jesus, you sent your angels to the churches of Asia Minor to announce to them either their fidelity to the gospel or their departure from the true faith. May your flock today hear the call of these angels to repent and believe in the gospel, turn from their sins to the only true God, and show forth works of mercy and charity to those who are broken by the fallenness of this world. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We continue with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And we are bold to pray as our Lord taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And for ourselves and others on this Thursday morning, oh, I'm going to turn the page. Gracious Father in heaven, I do not know when you will call me home, for in the middle of life we are in death. Regardless of the number of my days on earth, cause me always to be prepared to answer your summons. I know that the road of my life leads finally to your heavenly mansions. Equip me for the trials and pitfalls of life and teach me to perform each day that confronts me in your holy name. Remind me daily that I am a pilgrim without a home here and help me to assist my fellow travelers by sharing their burdens and showing them the glory of life in you. Whether my pathway leads to hilltops fair or high or through the sunless valleys where the shadows lie, it does not matter. For I know you are with me and that your everlasting arms are beneath me. Where you lead me, I will gladly go. Guide me unerringly in life's uncertain way until I reach my heavenly homeland. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Lord God, Heavenly Father, be with those who are suffering in body, mind, or soul. Be with those whose power may be out today or who are trapped in their homes due to the weather. Strengthen them. Give them time to spend in your word. Be with those who's, who are suffering illness, age, fatigue, or whatever their ailment, Lord. Strengthen them by your promise. Especially this day, we pray for Pat, Lois, Anne, Brianne, Rose, Bob, Mike, Megan, Ezra, and uh, Neely, and all who call upon your most holy name, grant them assurance and comfort by your Holy Spirit, always in your Son, our Lord. Amen.
To Almighty God, merciful Father, who created and completed all things on this day when the work of our calling begins anew, we implore you to create its beginning, direct its continuance, and bless its end, that our doings may be preserved from sin, our life sanctified, and our work this day be well-pleasing to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, my friends, that brings our devotion for this Thursday morning, December 15th, to a close. God's peace be with you. We'll see you back here Friday morning. Um, if you're shoveling, be careful. Don't give yourself a heart attack. Um, uh, but uh, uh, be safe. God's peace be with you.